Well, welcome everyone to this April 22nd meeting at 2024 of the CISD Board of Trustees. This is a regular meeting and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it is not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby on the audience for guest form and follow the information on the speaker form. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, make policy and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management is responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe and secure environment mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. And these are our core values. We appreciate the interest in your students at CISD. We are going to be led by the Pledge of Allegiance from Sam Houston Elementary. So I'm going to say your names. Juan Chavez, Brady Marks, Kate Anguiano, Cooper Neiman, Sophia Mendoza. Is that John Asperger? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yaritzi. <laughs> Perales, Alexander Mercado, and Leah Miguel. And we're going to follow your lead. Appreciate it very much. Our invocation will be by Coach Alan Walker. Amen. Greetings to everyone. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. We'll bow in prayer. Uh, dear, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you. We thank you for being so good and kind unto us on today. We thank you. For the people that make up the board, Lord God, administration, Lord God, and everyone in the district, Lord God, we pray that your favor be before them forevermore, Lord God. Cause them uh, to triumph and uh, make great decisions concerning the children in the community going forward, Lord God. We thank you uh, for your face shining upon us, and we pray your blessing over your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to change one thing tonight. Ron Capehart from Line Barger is an audience for guest, and we're going to let him go first. Thank you, Dr. Brown, Dr. Frost, members of the board. Uh, I'm Ron Capehart with Line Barger, your delinquent tax attorneys, and tonight is Christmas in April. <laughs> So uh, I've been playing Santa Claus today, and I'll get to play again now. Uh, through some successful tax sales, we have some excess proceeds for the district today. As you recall, these are uh, essentially windfall monies to the district. They are not uh, all previously allocated in the budget, so the school can use them as the, as the board and, and the administration sees fit. And today, I'm going to present Dr. Frost with checks totaling $34,890.93. As always, Ron and Allison, come back anytime. <laughs> come back anytime. I appreciate it. All right. Now we're going to go to the superintendent's report. 
Well, our track teams um, had a big day today. We're very proud of them. We had um, our track team qualified one individual and a relay for the state track meet, which is on May 3rd. Jashawn Lloyd is going back to Austin in two individual events after winning the 110 meter hurdles and finishing second in the 300 hurdles. The boys' 4x400 meter relay team of Jashawn, Keelan Haynes, Andre Ibanez, and Tashawn Lloyd finished second and also qualified for state. Our 4x400 girls relay team of Jasmine Newsom, Kiana Lopez, Cassandra Hernandez, and Miyasha Reinhardt set a school record and finished fourth. And the 4x400 team of Newsom, Erica Routon, Reinhardt, and Lopez finished fifth. Newsom was also sixth in the 400 meters. Congratulations to all of our Tiger Track um, participants. We're very proud of them, as well as our coaches, Wayne Brazil and Robert Spencer. So recently, Corsicana ISD or honored 50 teachers who earned the Texas Incentive Allotment designations from TEA. These teachers are rewarded for effectiveness in the classroom and their impact on students. So we just want to congratulate again each one of these very deserving educators. We also announced our Teachers of the Year. Our Golden Apple winner is Elizabeth Talley, a Corsicana High School English teacher. Golden Apple is our secondary award. The Elementary Award is the Mark Caldwell Award, and this year we have co-winners, Carroll Elementary teachers Mackenzie Urban and Natasha Polk, who both received the Caldwell Award. Each of these teachers has the opportunity to be the Region 12 Teacher of the Year, so they submit a lengthier application and um, do interviews with Region 12. Last um, week, Corsicana High School hosted a job fair with 25 local businesses and service providers. Um, it was a little bit different from the job fairs that you traditionally think of because they visited with students about potential futures in just our local workforce, um, specifically <coughs> focusing also on summer work and that sort of thing that students might be interested in. May 6, Corsicana ISD is hosting a job fair at the middle school beginning at 5.30. And so we, um, at that time, we offer the opportunity for anyone who's interested in working for Corsicana ISD to come and earn your tiger stripes with us. Last week, the Gear Up program from the high school attended TSTC signing day event in Waco, and 25 of our seniors decided to continue their post-secondary education at TSTC. We want to congratulate these students, and we know they'll be learning skills in a number of different industries. This week, Sarah Tolles and, Case, and Kaysen Smith will compete in the Regional Speech and Debate at UTA. Recently, seven Corsicana High School students were finalists in the district meet in Terrell. So we wish Sarah and Kaysen the very best of luck. Our high school one act play made it to the area round of the UIL contest. They performed the book of everything, and they performed it extremely well. One of my favorite plays that I've seen. Um, Megan Jonte was named All-Star Cast, Cameron Farmer was named All-Star Crew, and Sarah Tulls was named Honorable Mention All-Star Crew. Spots are still available for Camp Invention this summer. We hope parents will pay attention to the many social um, advertisements that we um, are putting out about Camp Invention. It's a full day camp. It runs from July 15th through the 18th. You can learn more if you haven't seen these or you just want more information by emailing the camp director, Meredith Boyd. Her email is mboyd at cisd.org. Our softball team is having a play-in game tonight versus Crandall with the winner earning fourth place in district and making the playoffs. The first pitch is scheduled for 7 p.m. at Waxahachie High School. Tomorrow night, our school psychologists are hosting an autism family night in Navarro Elementary. The event starts at 5.30, and it features a panel of parents who share their personal experiences um, on working with and living with um, students and their children with, um, who have autism. Star continues this week with three days of testing, always fun, and wraps up with three more days next week. We know our staff and students are giving the maximum effort during Star, and we commend them for their efforts. The first of the two-day Day of Champions events starts at 9.30 Friday at Tiger Stadium, if weather permits. The first event is for 7th through 12th graders. The first through 6th grade event is scheduled for Tuesday, April 30th. The Day of Champions is a wonderful day of competition and fun for our students with special abilities. So we look forward to both of those days. Thank you. Okay, we're going to get adjourned to closed session briefly.
as permitted by Texas Government Code Section 551.01. Thank you, everyone. We're back from closed session. Okay, let's let's take action on closed session. I make a motion to nominate um, Seth Brown as president, Jamie Roman as vice president, and Brad Farmer as secretary. Got be queen. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Got to be quick. That was famous. My word. time is almost up. <laughs> we rehearsed that perfect. <laughs> you, uh, uh, fourteen years. I did, I did. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, so we have nominations for new board officers. Myself as president. We have Jamie Roman as vice president, and Brad Farmer as secretary. All those in favor, say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. Eyes have it, and we have reorganized our board. Congratulations. We got to seats. You can do one more time. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. Well, all right. Now, do we do something? Okay. All right. So now we're going to announce a board training credit. So I'm sorry, I'm going to prepare you. I have a very long spill. Under State Board of Education rule, completing required continuing education each year of service is a basic obligation and expectation of any sitting board member. As board president, I'm, I'm required to announce the names of each member who is at the member's anniversary of election or appointment to the board, has completed the required continuing education, has exceeded the required continuing education and is deficient in meeting the required continuing education. The requirements for training are measured as of the first anniversary of the date of the trustee's election or appointment or two year anniversary of his or her previous training as applicable. There are seven training areas for board members continuing education. One, local district orientation. Two, orientation to the Texas Education Code. Three, team building. Four, additional continuing education. Five, evaluating student academic performance and setting goals. And number six, identifying and reporting abuse, trafficking, or other maltreatment of children. To the extent applicable to each board member, I will announce the completion or deficiency as to required training. For board members who still have time remaining to complete required training, I will announce those board members who have scheduled timely training and those who have yet not scheduled the training. At the conclusion of this announcement, I will announce any board members training in excess of the continuing education requirements. Local district orientation, we have no first year board members. An introduction to the Texas Education Code, we have no first year board members. Post-legislative update. The following board members have completed the post-legislative update. Barbara Kelly, Brad Farmer, Kathy Branch, Jimmy Roman, Kamar Chambers, Seth Brown. Team building. The, fo the following board members have completed the annual team building training. Jimmy Roman, Kathy Branch, Kamar Chambers, Barbara Kelly, Seth Brown, and Brad Farmer. Evaluating and improving student outcomes. This training must be completed every two years, formerly Senate Bill 1566 training. The following board members will complete this biennial training at the end of this board meeting tonight. Jamie Roman, Kathy Branch, Kamar Chambers, Barbara Kelly, Seth Brown, Brad Farmer. Child abuse prevention. The training must be completed every two years. The following board members have completed the biennial training on identifying and reporting abuse and trafficking and other maltreatment of children. Kathy Branch, Kamar Chambers, Barbara Kelly, Jamie Roman, Brad Farmer, and Seth Brown. Exceeding 
required continuing educations. Board Member Barbara Kelly exceeded the requirement required amount of continuing education by 10.5 additional hours. Board Member Kamar Chambers exceeded the required amount of continuing education training by 5.5 hours. Board Member Brad Farmer exceeded the required amount of continuing education training by five hours. Board Member Seth Brown exceeded the required amount of continuing education training by five hours. Board Member Jamie Roman exceeded the amount of continuing education training by five hours. And Board Member Kathy Branch exceeded the required amount of continuing education training by five hours. Barbara, I won't beat you next year. <laughs> Where my certificate at? <laughs> Meryl has it. <laughs> but I'm going to get you next year, okay? All right. I just want to say this before y'all we go to the next. Um, I have enjoyed um, learning. You know, my 14 years of training, I'm all about it. You know, I'm all, because I'm a school board member, so I'm all about education. So I went above and beyond. When it comes down to training, I took my training serious. I did. I, I, I did extra. And I just, I just want to tell my fellow board members, it is it, a lot. You know, and I know we, we y'all work full time, but I know y'all are committed to education. And I know you guys are going to go above, above and beyond the training. And, we, we, and you learn so much. So anyway, thank you so much. Thank you to everybody. I love y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next, we're going to go to TEAK certification. Good afternoon, Dr. Frost, Dr. Brown, distinguished members of the board. I'm here today to request approval for the Instructional Materials Allotment TEAK certification for the 2024-2025 school year, as presented in the board book. The TEAK certification process requires that Corsicana ISD certify annually to the State Board of Education and the Commissioner that students have access to instructional materials covering all TEAKs. The TEAK certification documents also require that we certify we are in compliance with the Children's Internet Protection Act. The attached TEAK certification document contains the instructional resources the district uses. The listed resources include both full subject instructional materials and supplemental materials the district is using in grades K through 12. Tim, this is an action item. We've had this in our board book. Does anybody have any questions for Dr. Hall? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I move that the board certifies, certifies that the instructional materials used by the district meet the criteria listed on the instructional materials allotment and TEKS certification form for 2024 and 2025. Second. We have a motion and a second to certify that the instructional materials used by the district meet the criteria listed on the instructional materials allotment and take certification form for 2024-2025. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. Ayes have it and we have certified the instructional materials to be used by the district meet the criteria listed on the instructional materials allotment and take certification form for 2024-2025. Um, at this <coughs> time, and I do have Ms. Ware and Ms. Gafford here as well, if y'all want to come up here too as well. Um, at this time, I am pleased to provide an update on the Gifted and Talented Program in Corsicana ISD. As of the 2023-2024 school year, we had a little over 12% of our students enrolled in the Gifted and Talented Program. The enrollment numbers by grade level are displayed in the table here. So I think right up here. So we have 12.1 students and then the, the overall uh, student count by enrollment is by grade level is in the table. At Corsicana ISD, we define gifted and talented students as those who exhibit high performance capability and intellectual ability or excel in one or more specific academic fields. 
To identify GT students, we use a minimum of three criteria, including the NGAT test, which is this one right here, as well as two other criteria, which we administer to all kindergarten and fourth grade students, as well as screening students nominated by school personnel, community members, or self-nominations by students. We also host GT showcases in the fall and the spring, which allow our students in first through sixth grade to display their work and inform those attending how they created their project. This past fall, over 350 stakeholders attended the event, and we hope to see even more this year to, or more in this, this spring to support our students. The spring showcase is set for the week of May 6th through the 9th, and the times are from 1130 to 1215. We offer advanced courses in the upper grades, and this year over 87 GT students have taken AP or dual credit classes for college credit. Most of the 87 students are not just taking one class. Many GT students are stacking their AP and dual credit classes to enhance their high school experience. So to give you an example, we have approximately 170 GT students, and 87 of those are taking advantage of the AP and dual credit courses. Not just pre-AP, not just honors classes, but AP and dual credit. The structure and content of our GT classes vary by grade level, as you can tell by that table down here. So we have some pullouts, but we also have some classes that the GT supports are embedded in the program. Lastly, for this, we want to make sure that we praise our GT teachers, Mrs. Ware and Mrs. Gafford and Ms. Simington, who couldn't be here tonight, for doing a phenomenal job with our students and creating lessons that are engaging and challenging. They have brought two students here today uh, who want to give you a sneak peek at the projects on display that will be there at the spring showcase. Awesome. And they each have a speech for you as well. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Cassius Wright. I go to Navarro Elementary. One of the projects that we worked on this semester was to design a CEV. A CEV is short for a crew exploration vehicle. Our CEV had to hold two astronauts. The astronauts had to be in a seat so that they wouldn't fall out. But we were allowed to use glue or tape to hold them in. My group held ours in by making a seat belt out of pipe cleaners. We launched our CEVs last week and the furthest ours launched was 102 centimeters. I am going to launch the CEV for you now. I would like to invite you to our GT presenta presentation on May 8th. Helper. The single machine used in the 
handicap helper is a lever. A lever is made of rigid beam and a fulcrum. Mechanical energy is used to operate this machine. The handicap helper is a power lifting device used to transport wheelchairs and users from one level to another. The handicap helper can be used anywhere thanks to its compact compactness. Advantages over other systems is that the wheelchair lifts are ideal for property owners who lack the space to meet the ramp requirements or simply don't want to sacrifice the space to make it accessible. The handicap helper is a machine that will lift disabled people from one level to another safely and practically without the loss of valuable space. job to our GT students. We appreciate you coming by and showing us those things. Very much. All right. Ms. Harrison, is there any more audience for guests? All right. Thank you. We have consent agenda. I move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes have it. Move approve the consent agenda. I do that for you. I do. All right. <clears throat> so now, are we going to do the board journey? Yeah, we'll go back. We'll, we'll go back in the, the executive session then. Um, but we're not going to the closed session. We'll do the Vader presentation then? They're going to be simultaneous. Okay. So which one do we want to do first? Um, do do the, the board training first. Okay. Now we'll go to board training, evaluating and improving student outcomes. So we have two people here from Region 12. Um, it's, it's about a two-hour training. So I'm going to let the staff know that if they would like to leave, they certainly may. And um, <laughs> If the audience wants to stay, it's um, it's more training session, so you may, but you may, we will not think badly of you if you choose to leave. But if you want to learn about evaluating and improving student outcomes, we're glad to have you here. 